we are in a fast changing environment for clinical trials and because uh, there are so many um, new compounds that have been uh, identified and many new approaches including immunotherapy and uh, also uh, many um, advances in uh, biology. Okay, so how do we design clinical trial more effectively and uh, uh, how do we use it to um, identify compound, effective compound quickly and uh, treat patient better and we need uh, 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 different kind of thinking like uh, in adaptive design. So traditionally, clinical trial design is uh, done based on the so-called frequentist approach. And under frequentist approach, the main goal is to control type 1 and type 2 error. Okay? So there are very little adaptation um, is uh, permitted. And uh, typically, you know, you run a trial, um, randomized patient for uh, five or ten e uh, years, and then after that, then you unblind the trial and you find out what's the result. And it's a long process, it's not very efficient. Uh, so another way to do it is under the Bayesian framework. And these are the two different inference platform under statistics. One is frequentist, one is a Bayesian. And these two approach are actually complementary to each other. It's just a different way you look at it. As I mentioned in my talk, that Bayesian approach, take the we learn as we go kind of approach. Um, by uh, the nature of the, the framework, it allow you to um, have a very natural um, updates, okay? Because uh, under the Bayesian approach, you have your prior information, plus the data become your posterior, your posterior become new prior, plus new data become your new posterior. So it's continue to learn, and that's uh, suitable, much suitable uh, for the clinical trial setting. Yes, it's uh, much easier to include other information. Okay, so as I also mentioned in my talk, Bayesian approach um, can incorporate um, all available information, either you know, before the study or during the study. And you can even project into the future using the predictive probability approach. And also you can incorporate information inside and also you know, beyond the trial. At MD Anderson, that uh, we um, have used this approach in many different trials. Um, so on the average, about 20% of the trial uh, conducted at Anderson has some kind of Bayesian components. Okay. And uh, two of the most uh, prominent trial, one is the battle trial in lung cancer, which was completed a few years back. And uh, we have uh, four treatments, and we have 11 biomarkers. So we try to match the patient biomarker profile and assign better treatment using adaptive randomization. So that uh, result has been published um, already. And uh, the other prominent trial that's uh, using the basic adaptive design is ISPY2 trial in breast cancer, in which you know, Professor Don Berry uh, was the statistician, designed the trial. And the trial has been ongoing for a while. Actually, last year in the summer, there was two, uh, two New England Journal publication identify uh, the promising drug and uh, marker uh, pairs, and that can be sent to the uh, phase three trial for further evaluation. Yeah, so again, it's, uh, I mentioned uh, that in my talk that traditionally uh, clinical trial design um, was based on the frequentist approach and uh, actually starting from the 1940s. So it's about you know, 60, 70 years of uh, history and the people are used to it and it has uh, you know, really um, established the standard of uh, a clinical trial, the rigor, the control type 1 and type 2 error rate. So that's good. Okay. But it's hard to change the uh, standard uh, thinking and practice. 
So um, I urge people to learn more about the Bayesian framework and then see the merit of that and uh, also think about uh, implementing more adaptive design, especially for the early phase of trials. After my session, many people came to me and asked about the software that we developed. And that's one of the highlights in my talk, that at MD Anderson, uh, we have developed two kinds of software. One is a, a downloadable software. You can download the software and run on your PC. And then the other type of software is online software. You don't need any uh, particular software, but uh, different packages, but you can just uh, run it with a browser. And uh, um, those software are designed for education in terms of learning new methods and also for um, studying the new design and the, for conducting the trial for implementation. So I welcome people uh, go to our MDNSN software online site and download site and uh, select the program of your interest and uh, start to learn and to use them.